Susan. Welcome to our sneak peek program. I'm Jane Lovino, Curator of Education and Exhibits here at the museum. The, the sneak peek program today is introducing the new exhibit, In Dubious Battle, Paintings by Shelley Reed. And we will be moving in there eventually, but we're starting in here, and I'll explain why in just a moment. The exhibit officially opens to the public tomorrow, and then is up through August 23rd. And we typically do these programs right before an exhibit opens, because we find that people really enjoy a chance to talk to some of the people who have been involved in getting the exhibit ready, and get a little bit of insider information before it does open to the public. With that in mind, since it's not officially open to the public, when we go into the exhibition space, you may see a few things that aren't quite ready, such as sometimes lighting or a few of the interpretive elements, but you're going to have a, a good sneak peek of the exhibit today. So this whole program lasts one hour. The first half hour is in here with a very special guest presenter and some slides, and the second 30 minutes is in the exhibition space with our museum curators. See what else I wanted to tell you about today. Oh, before I forget, we are very grateful to Lisa Carlin for the generous support that she and David had, have offered over the years for our sneak peek programs. Um, see what else? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, local artist Greta Gretzinger, who is here with us today, sitting over on the couch there, she is going to kick off today's program by talking about her own art and you will immediately understand why we've invited her. Greta and Shelley Reed have strong parallels in their approach to making art. Both like to paint large murals, and both draw heavily from art historical references and change the context, so it changes the meaning, so you see it in a new light. Even if you don't know Greta, I am willing to bet, if you live here, that you know her smart, whimsical murals that adorn many of our public spaces in and around Jackson, Mary Piglet's Restaurant, New York City Sub Shop, the Rocky Mountain Oyster out at Teton Village, the exterior wall of the Gun Barrel Restaurant, just to name a few. So you are in for a treat. Please join me in welcoming Greta Gretzinger. Uh, 
but the background is essentially the same. Their, their poses are the same. Um, and uh, Okay, next slide. Um, the other... <laughs>
that was about nudes. And so uh, I did this one for that show. Next. These are two other places I've used that image. The first one is in, um, a, some of you may have been to Dr. Menelancino's office, and he wanted some, some murals that would take the place of his wall charts, but were <laughs> extremely <laughs> accurate, and had all of the things he would usually point to and show his patients exactly <laughs> where their arteries were clogged or where the, um, the ureters went down from the kidneys. He needed something that was very accurate. So I, I used to be a nurse, so I had a lot of knowledge about anatomy, but I used a lot of books to make sure I got all of this really <laughs> correct for him. And then the other one uh, uh, is on a tabletop of that mermaid looking, looking just so longingly at that beautiful red shoe. <laughs> Next. The um, <laughs> Mona Lisa. And all the different ways. I've, I've used her a lot too. I love changing her around. Um, she's another one that I've, I've used a number of times. And just a lot of times it's hard to know where to start on a project, um, even a commission. Um, and so it's fun to just look through art books. Sometimes things will just spark your imagination, and sometimes I'll get an idea to directly say, oh, this project would be perfect if I started with this. Um, there's times when, like this, you can look at it side by side and see, well, of course, she just copied that. There's other times when, if I showed you what the reference was, you would say, how in the world did you get from here to there? It doesn't make any sense but something inside my mind gets sparked and it gives me that initial idea I need to begin. Okay. Um, there it is on the hood of my old Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> Next. This, some people may remember, this was part of, this was part of an exhibition at the Center for the Arts a long time ago, maybe in 1990, I can't quite remember. Um, and this is absolutely a historical reference, and it's, it's about the, the secret life of paintings when nobody's at the museum, um, long before they came out with that movie about the art museum. So, most of this show was uh, paper mache fish and um, and paintings, and I just decided that I needed to make one great big piece that was going to stand out in this exhibit. And so this is what I came up with, was how to put the Rousseau painting and the Virgin and Child in there. So here's some of the references for that. So I used these different Madonnas and their babies and just had the lizard decide to snatch that baby off her lap. <laughs> um, and I'm sure you can tell which parts in that are three-dimensional and which are, which are flat. Okay. Um, this is still on the side of the gun barrel steakhouse. Um, you have to drive through the the uh, drive through at the bank that's now on the corner there to see it, but it is still there. And actually, it's, it looks better than ever because it's shaded now. Um, the owner of the restaurant wanted, we gave him several ideas of what he might paint on there, and he decided that he wanted to have something that was uh, very traditional. And so we chose, you can see in the lower part here, we kind of cropped out a piece of uh, of this painting and added a little bit different scenery to it, um, moved things around a little bit. But for a long time you could see this from the intersection, which you can't anymore. It's kind of a shame. And I did work on this with another person, Lawrence, um, shoot, I, sorry, I forgot his name now. Bennett. Bennett, yes, Lawrence Bennett. Yeah. Um, 
And that's okay. that's huge. I it mean, is huge. If you haven't seen it, how, yeah. how high is that one? Well, how high is that? Yes, well, it's, and you can't see in this, it's a ways up off the ground, too. That lower border is taller than it looks. The picture's been cropped, and so the ground is quite a ways below where that is. Um, and I would say it's probably 40 or 50 feet long. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. no. It's a big one. Yeah, it is very big. Okay. Um, this was a smaller piece that was done as part of, part of some cabinets in uh, a friend's airstream. And she just loved this Maxfield Parish image of, uh, and had a poster of it in her room and wanted to change this. There's a, off to the right is her husband fly fishing and he's portrayed as a bear also. Now a lot of times I just put animals in doing things because I like them and I like to have uh, a lot of action happening. There's other times like this where people actually want certain things that are meaningful to them. Um, with the sub shop murals, I usually ask people, um, "What do you? What animal do you see? What do you prefer? What do you see yourself as?" Uh, this, this, this isn't a sub shop here. This doesn't show it as much as some some. <coughs> that are further along. This one's more just about this particular thing and uh, God giving Adam the first son. <laughs> I had a friend here that took her daughter years ago. This, There was a different interpretation of this in the old sub shop, which was teeny tiny, and it was up on the ceiling. Uh, but it was basically the same thing, just a smaller version. And when she took her daughter, to the Sistine Chapel in Italy, I thought it was probably about 12 or 13. Amy looked up and said, look, Mom, it's just like Greta painted in the sub shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so proud. <laughs> and this is, yeah, this is more like what I was talking about. This is in the sub shop in Hood River, Oregon. And this is something in all of the sub shops, I've sort of taken people that are real people. Um, this was a friend of Bruce's that was a ski patrolman named Sheep Nelson. Sheep was his nickname. He wore these leg warmers on his arms and called them Armands. So the sheep has his, sheep has his Armands on. <laughs> And uh, he, had, he also, he had a speedboat that he rode around on palisades, dragging, you know, uh, uh, water skiers behind. So I gave him a different kind of boat. I found this illustration in a book, um, and I was amazed that I found it again on the internet to put, up, to put in with this slideshow. I, it, it just was, because uh, I didn't think I was going to find it. I was blown away that I had. But that was what that was the inspiration for this picture. And I don't know if you can tell, but in the lower part, the lower left-hand corner where it says up, that arrow is pointing to the staircase. And that's actually the top of the door there. So this is a big piece, and it's up high. That's the area above the door. And it's pointing to where the seating is upstairs. Um, but this picture and this engraving had so many cool things on it to either copy or leave out. I loved the keg underneath it. All those ski patrollers were big drinkers. So the keg seemed very good on for that. Um, and up on that tiny little flag up on the balloon is where I signed my name. <laughs> my name is too long, so I always just sign G. Getz. This is another, this was one of the pictures that was uh, a series of things I was doing for galleries at a time when I was doing gallery work. I don't very much anymore because I just like doing commissions. I like I like having an assignment. I like having a place to start. And one of the things about painting 
um, and doing these projects from historical paintings was it gave me a place to start. It gave me that um, where do you go from the blank page thing that writers confront as well. You know, how, how do you start? Um, and so the historical pictures were a place to do that and having an assignment, having a commission for me is another way I love to be able to, to work creatively within having an assignment. Um, and I don't know if you can quite tell that the, you can tell on the right hand side that that fish is three dimensional. It's three it's a complete three dimensional paper mache fish um, that stands out from a flat artwork um, behind it. And you can see that over near her butt and her back. You can see where the tail shape is there. But I think I did a pretty good job of blending that in. So it's really uh, an illusion where that is. And then I gave her a fishing rod and a fly box. <laughs> and the frame is completely painted or paper mache? The, the paper mache form is painted as well. But it is a complete three-dimensional fish. It doesn't... In this picture, it looks like it actually recedes back in and blends in with the picture. It's fully shaped and is standing away from the board in back of it. But I love the way, and this is exactly what I was trying to get, was that it would create the illusion of, of where the fish stopped and the figure started. And this is another place I've used that on gray picture. I reversed her and stuck her in the back of this mural, which was at the top of some uh, a, a stair landing, where the bartender was the man of the house, and the waitress is the lady of the house. And I don't think she would mind me telling you that when she commissioned, when they commissioned this, she said she would like to have some nicer breasts. <laughs> type of 
of uh, imagery here. So this was really fun to work on. And I think the next slide shows some of the images for this. Next. Here's some of the, she loved this picture on the left-hand side. And she said, well, I love this picture, but I guess we don't want all the blood in the dining room. So we gave him a lute instead. He, he became a musician instead of an executioner. Um, and he's a little bit happier looking. You can't see too well, but he's, he's instead of cleaning his sword with his uh, with his toga, he's playing a lute, or he's about to, or just finished, not sure which. Um, and then on the right, the three graces, and, uh, and I love the way they're dancing together, and their feet. Um, we wanted to make them more colorful and a little bit uh, more bouncy. And so they became these ladies. <laughs> In some very colorful costumes. And I think there was a pan somewhere that we looked at and, and liked to have another musician playing for the ladies dancing. And the floaty scarves just added some more action, some more going on. Um, this person I'm, that I do this work for, she always says, I want it, I want it big, I want it colorful, I want a lot happening. And so she's really fun to work for. This is a painting I did for some ladies up in Montana that were sisters. And this is a cabin that they have. This is, uh, they got a hold of me to do this commission and said, this might sound silly, but could you paint us as cows swimming <laughs> around our campfire? <laughs> and I said, of course I can. Would you, how much of it? She said, no, she had seen a different picture that I did. And she said, well, we're a little wilder than that. And I said, well, like how wild? Do you want like full udders hanging out? And she said, oh, yeah. So <laughs> and they had a lot of stories. The one over on the far left was probably the wilder of them. And there was a story to do with that Patron tequila. And uh, so that had to be in there, and it referred to some wild night that she'd had. And she, it was very fun because she sent me pictures of all of the three of them um, in sort of typical outfits that they would wear. She told me a lot about them, and then I needed to make them into cows and keep all of their personality and have it so that people who came to their house could sort of say, oh, well, it's obvious that this one is, I can't remember their names now, um, and this one is so-and-so. And she said, oh, you got us completely. That is so, it's perfect. And I said, well, you did a great job of describing each of you and giving the, the photos I needed to make this look like you, even though we were cows. And I looked at these pictures of the, uh, Rubens was particularly good, just more for the feeling of voluptuous ladies um, than actual looking, at, you know, I, not so much copying the form as the feeling of voluptuous ladies um, that, was, that was really fun to look at and inspiring to me. And this is, we're getting, so we need to move on, so we'll go kind of quickly through these. Um, this is a picture that I did with an animal. That I think that this is a local scene. She's looking at the paper, the weather's going to be gray, 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 gray for the next week. It's, look at the outside. She's dreaming of cactus. She's got her little cactus garden there. This is called the cabin fever. She's got the flu in an ice bag, and she doesn't know when spring is ever going to be here. <laughs> next. Um, these are tourists in Jackson Hole. <laughs> Clearly they're lost. <laughs> um, and they're Texas armadillos. They don't, they don't know where they are. They're having a good time, but he's not listening to her. She's trying to tell him he's on the wrong road, but he won't listen. Next. This is in the Mary Piglets as you first walk in the door. One thing, you can go down and see this mural. One thing you won't see is over, far over on the right-hand
inside, there's a rat in a trap. Um, Joe said, no. <laughs> you can't have that in a restaurant. <laughs> that meant something personal to me. Um, and I asked Tracy, the manager, I said, really, you want a cup with a donut? And she said, they come in here all the time. They will love it. <laughs> so it wasn't meant as any kind of a slam against the police. And sure enough, I've talked to some of them, and they say, we love it that you put a cop with a donut. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Yeah. 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 More of the Mary Piglets. This, the one on the left is one of the first ones I painted in the Mary Piglets, and I just love that. Pig, the pigs in their story and more pants. <laughs> that just made me so happy to paint that. And his little piggy belly button. <laughs> <laughs> And here's another picture of a, a, a moose and a raft and a beaver, and uh, that's what painted for Sands Whitewater. This is part of a mural in his office, and the moose, of course, is the local, and he's showing the tourists the sights. <laughs> Next, this is in the in Bubba's. It's part of a mural that you can go and see in there, and. Uh, and happy animals eating in a local restaurant. Some of them, some of there's some little jokes in here. Of course, the rabbits at the salad bar. <laughs> um, I don't know why a fish would want pancakes and bacon, but he does. <laughs> and you'll see the the pig is not having bacon. <laughs> Next, this is out on the village road. This is um, on Rabbit Row. The red is faded on this to almost black now which red will do outside. Um, but there's, I can't remember how many rabbits are actually in this. You can go out there and see it and count. One, two, three, four, there's five, six. I can't remember. It seemed like there were a couple that were way hidden in there. Okay, next. I'm moving along quickly now so we can move into the other room. This is at the Rocky Mountain Oyster. More animals doing human things, put into human situations. Um, this is more of a typical western scene, but just turned around a little bit. The old cow pokes are, mo are moose. Next. These are um, in, their, in another building out at the village. You can probably look through the windows and see some of these now. I don't think this is open in the summer. But these are, I just love painting things like this. You'll see Corbett's Kular over on the left. Um, and the animals in the hot tub below. There's a lot of local scenery in this village stuff. In the in the front room, there's some summer things that happen. There's music festival scenes. And this is at the Hood River sub shop. And these are the the two animals on bicycles are two of their employees that said they liked um, you know foxes and um, ermines, and they were bicycles. So I figured out how to get them in their bicycling. There's a rock out there at Smith Rocks where people go climbing. It's called Monkey Face Rocks. And of course, Bruce's, Bruce's Kong is sitting on top of the Monkey Face Rock with us. Uh, and you can see, actually, you can look through that little window in there and see the size of this. This is a big, a big mural. That's a life-size person inside that little window. Next. This is from the uh, one of the other sub shops. More local scenery. In these murals, I like to put a lot of local scenes. That's out uh, at the Dalles in Oregon, where the this is before they dammed it when the um, Indians used to build these platforms and fish for salmon out there. Um, but instead, he's catching a big sub. They have a recreation of the Stonehenge out there, so I put Kong about to slice into a sub there. But this is just some of the ways I like to play with these historical things and places. And next, I think that may be the last one. Yep. <laughs> brain works that will serve you well as we move into the next phase. But before we do that, are there any questions specific to what you've just seen and heard with Greta? Yes. Did, were you schooled in art, Greta? Or, or how, um, how did you learn I took some classes. Uh, I was actually trained as a nurse. Um, I took some classes when I was in college and, 
and high school, and then later on, after I decided I was going to start working as an artist, I did take some other classes, but mostly I'm self-taught and taught by others. I learned how to paint big when I worked for a sign painter, wow. um, and we painted some, some large things. So I learned a lot about scaling and, and proportion, working large for her. Picture with the paper mache fish it was the frame itself also paper mache? No, the frame the was frame painted. Was flat. The okay. frame was flat, but it was painted to look like it a frame. Looked like it Good. Was that was it was supposed to. That's yeah, great. That's great. In fact, the first time I saw this pairing, I was like, wait a minute, which one is Greta's and which one is? <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's a little bit more obvious when you see it in real life. You can move around it. Um, what's flat and what isn't. But, but I'm really happy that you asked that. That means it's successful, that, mm -hmm. that it has that three-dimensional look. And some of, on all of these, some of these I had to scan from photos, and, and they've got a little bit of, you know, they're not, they really weren't that crooked. Um, but uh, scanning them and then trying to enlarge them, they didn't come out quite square. Okay, so what, here's what's happening next. We're going to be moving right across the hallway here into the Bison Gallery, where we have, uh, we'll have Curator of Art Bronwyn Minton is going to be telling us about the Shelley Reed's imagery, and Curator of Education and Exhibits Carrie Schwartz, who's back at the camera right now, will be talking about the educational interpretive elements that are a key piece to enjoy, enjoying Shelley Reed's work. Um, when the program, just a reminder, ends at noon, remember you can go into the Rising Sage Cafe and get a discount. Any program participant gets a 20% discount on lunch today. Just tell them I'm a sneak peek program participant and they will apply that discount to your tab. So let's go across the way. Thank you so much, Greta. She's going to be